chocolate owes its existence to the cocoa bean. The ancient civilizations of Mexico and Central and South America cultivated this seed to make a drink. The Spanish conquest brought this chocolate drink to Europe, but it wasn't until 1847 that a British company invented solid chocolate. This factory makes chocolate in various forms and sells it to companies which manufacture chocolate products for retail sale. It also supplies chocolate components such as cocoa powder and cocoa butter. Most of the cocoa beans arriving here come from West Africa, which grows 70% of the world's crop. A conveyor belt moves them through a cleaning system, a series of sieves which screen out twigs, stones and other debris. Next stop is a micronizer, a revolving drum which heats the cocoa beans to loosen their shells. Then they enter a shell removing machine called a winnower. Inside, successive rakes drag the beans across screens, pulling off large pieces of shell. Then a vacuum sucks away the remaining smaller pieces. Removing the shell exposes the inside of the cocoa bean, which is called the nib. The factory will roast the nibs to develop their flavor. More than 50% of the nib is fat, which is cocoa butter. To make chocolate, they'll combine processed nibs, cocoa butter and sugar, along with milk powder if they're making milk chocolate. First, the factory processes the nibs by grinding them. The heat and friction activate the cocoa butter, producing pure liquid chocolate, called chocolate liquor. The factory extracts some of the cocoa butter to sell it separately as a chocolate making ingredient and to use for in-house chocolate production, along with other ingredients in various proportions. The dark chocolate recipe, for example, calls for more chocolate liquor, sugar and cocoa butter, but no milk powder. The recipe for unsweetened chocolate contains no sugar. The mixer blends the ingredients to the consistency of a very thick cake batter. The flavor is fine by this point, but the coarse texture needs to be smoothed out. So the chocolate moves to a refining machine, passing between a set of five rollers, which reduce the particle size. So much so that within just minutes, the chocolate leaves the refiner as a fine, dry powder. But now it needs to be reliquified. So the next stop is a machine called a conch. The friction and heat once again activate the cocoa butter, returning the powder to a liquid state. At this point, they add more cocoa butter, enough to reduce the viscosity to the exact thickness they need. Just a bit, for example, if they're making chocolate chips, or much more if they're making a thin chocolate coating. For chocolate chips, the conch feeds a machine called a drop depositor. As the name implies, it deposits drops of chocolate onto a conveyor belt. The nozzle trays are interchangeable, so the machine can be set up to produce various sizes of chips, discs or other shapes. The chocolate chips, still warm and soft, enter a cooling tunnel. Traveling for about 5 minutes through several temperature zones, which vary between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. By the time the chips exit the tunnel, they're hard. A conveyor belt then takes them through a metal detector, a standard food safety precaution. The factory also produces 4.5 kilogram bulk format chocolate bars. A depositor fills bar-shaped plastic molds. The conveyor transfers them to an elevator system, which moves through a cold room for about two hours. This constant motion ensures optimal air circulation, helping the cooling process. Chocolate shrinks slightly as it cools, so the bars pop out of the molds easily. To make the chocolate look as good as it tastes, the factory cools, then reheats the liquid chocolate before depositing it. This process, called tempering, promotes the growth of the most stable cocoa butter crystals, making the surface of the chocolate smooth and shiny.